I don't think I've ever met a woman who didn't regret taking back a cheat. Maybe there's a couple out there, but I want you to read this story with me as to why you should not be taking back these cheaters or believing anything they say, basically. Okay, so this story was in the Washington Post. This lady's like, okay, my, my uh, soon-to-be ex-husband spent the, the better part of last year, so most of the year, lying to me about everything from when he was going to the grocery store to having an affair. Okay, I thought that meant like he was lying about going to the grocery store to go have an affair, but no, she's saying he literally lies about everything. He, like, he, he lies about everything. Liar. Okay, these men are liars. It's like a, a, a full-time job that they don't get paid for. Although it benefits them because they get all your labor by manipulating you, but whatever. He's like, he recently confessed that he felt the need to lie. He felt the need. Okay, this language is so transparent, y'all. Uh, to, to maintain his independence. Because he's a big boy. He's a big boy and he needs to be free. <laughs> Uh, to make it much worse, all caps, he's been gaslighting me all the time. Well, yeah, of course. When I would catch him in a lie, he would blame me for being jealous or controlling or imagining things. They love to do this, y'all. His behavior crushed my spirit, my self-confidence, and our marriage. Okay, so I don't even understand why she's writing in at this point. Like, you know. You know. I know people need someone to say, you're right. This man is trash. Let him go. This is what men will do right here. Watch what he's doing. With several months of hindsight, he's contacting me claiming that he realizes how terrible his behavior was and how awful he feels for treating me so badly. He wants to get together claiming he wants to apologize in hopes that we could become friends because he misses me. No, he doesn't. Wait, this man, first of all, he's not your friend. He was never your friend. I, I do not have friends who would ever do that to me. Like your partner, your, your spouse, your whatever, they, they should be your friend. They should be your best friend. What, uh, why else are you together? But my friends would never do that to me. Never. Not the ones in my life now, maybe some in the past. This man is not your friend. And like I've said a lot of times, it is very hard to be friends with men after you've dated them because all they want is your free emotional labor and all the other things, right? Like... Go to therapist, bro. We are not it. Or pay me 300 an hour and then I'll be your friend and listen to your crap. So this is where this woman knows what's up. Okay. He hurt me to the core. I've spent months in therapy dealing with PTSD of his emotional abuse. So this is a lot of money. I don't think women realize until you're actually in this situation how much it costs you money to date trash. Like even if they're not a hobo schedule gold digging loser like so many of them are just this part alone do you know how much how expensive this is i could have bought like a few cars with how much money i have spent in my lifetime trying to recover from the trauma of men look at this uh and i am in a, a much better place of course you are you're away from this dude he's pleading for an opportunity to show me that he's processed he's processed it oh good you actually thought about it <laughs> he's processed all of his emotions his okay ah and he's ready to make amends okay if this dude's in 12 steps this might be a 12 step thing i mean you know we, we we all know what this is right um but here's the thing i've had people make amends to me before um that like they they do not need you to meet with them for them to do okay okay they do not need that. They, their whole recovery is about them admitting shit to themselves, trying to make it right, forgiving themselves, and trying their best to be a better person and not doing that. It has nothing to do with you. Unless he's going to show up with a big bag of money to pay for all this, don't meet up with him. You don't need to hear his amends. He can write you a letter, okay? I'm just saying this is somebody who knows... Lots of people who've been in that world and it, the, 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 they are supposed to be okay whether you meet up with them or not. In fact, a lot of times it's actually better for both of you to not meet up again. Just part, you know what I mean? Wish them well from afar. Do not put yourself in danger. And by danger, I mean emotional danger because all this recovery is on the line. All of it by meeting up with this dude because he's a malign manipulator and he knows your buttons. 
He's going to try to be a friend. Maybe get back with you or whatever. Don't do it. Everything is on the line here. He does not need to make amends to you. Uh, because even if this has nothing to do with that whole thing, this is selfish. Because he's trying to get forgiveness. He's trying to get something from you. He wants you to know that Timmy did his work and he knows. He understands. You're not his mom. You don't need to be like, yay, you've got a great job. I'm proud of you. You don't need that. You don't need to do that. He doesn't need that from you because you're not his mom. Although he thinks you are, even though he still wants to fork his mom because these men are so sick and twisted in the head. So she's skeptical. I'm protective of my recovery that I've made. Here's the thing. This is her delusion right here. This is what I need women to work on. These men are probably going to try to keep doing this. Please, let's be friends. Let me make amends. Let me show you I've changed. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, this man has done so much damage. There's no reason to date again. You know, I'm not, I believe people can have redemption. I believe in redemption. I have changed a lot. And therefore, I believe a lot of people can change a lot. I love that for people. But not at your expense. And this right here is her codependency. We're going to watch her say it right here. For a few days, I fantasized that he might be so genuine that we could repair and renew our relationship. No, that's not going to happen because you don't have enough recovery to meet up with this man. You are brand new. You are baby in recovery from codependency. You are still like probably bonded to this man with all kinds of stuff. You have your history. You have your nervous system. You have all kinds of stuff. You No! No, you're a baby! In your healing journey, do not put that on the line to let these men admit what they did wrong, okay? Also, why do you want to renew your relationship? This dude was probably cheating for a long time. He probably cheated on you before he even got married. This man's full of crap, okay? You probably don't even know how big the iceberg is. You've just seen the tippy tippy top of it. You just probably missed the red flag. Maybe he changed. But my guess is, is that... Once a cheater, always a cheater. And I got a statistic or like a thing that I'm going to show you in a bit to back this up. Now I realize that my codependent nature is wanting to save our relationship at any cost. And this right here is why women are suffering so much. Stop trying to save your relationship. Stop trying to save these men. Center yourself. Center your recovery. Center all that because these men are literally going to... You're going to forgive them and to the point of you dying trying to forgive them. For what? They don't even care about you. This dude does not love this woman. He's just realizing like, crap, I'm going to lose someone who does all the domestic labor, all the mental labor, all the emotional labor. I'm going to lose my um, unpaid schmegs worker. I'm going to lose all this stuff. Crap. Maybe I can get her back. She'll see I've changed. Don't fall for it. This is another codependency lie right here. I don't want to hate him for the rest of my life. But I realize that his track record is that of a liar and a manipulator. Here's the thing. Meeting up with him will have no impact on whether you hate that man or not. This is what I had to learn. There is no closure. That may, First of all, he will probably never actually understand what he did or apologize uh, or make it right. Chances are, because these men don't change, usually. Sometimes, but don't give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay? But this is where we have to center ourselves, okay? The, the nature of being like codependent on this relationship is that if only fill in the blank happens, I'll feel better. If only he apologizes, I'll feel better. If only he uh, admits what he does, then I'll feel validated and vindicated. First of all, he's never going to do that. And even if he does, you have to come to that place on your own. You know, I think I've told y'all before, one of my mentors told me she had been in a, an abusive relationship long ago. And she said the thing that every single woman had in common when she went to like a like a support group for, for survivors of DV. Every, the only thing that they all had in common, they had a lot in common, but a lot not in common, was they all were desperate for the need to have closure and for that man to say sorry, or at the very least, admit what he did. That's what all of them wanted. And the person who was, you know, kind of in running this group was like, until you all admit to yourselves and accept that you're not gonna get that and let go of this fantasy of that moment, and, and needing to feel better to have that moment, you will never be free. You'll never be free. She knows it. She says, in hopes of receiving both validation of my pain and possibly his regret and remorse, she thinks that's going to help her forgive. It's not, baby. This woman knows what to do. She knows what to do. 
let him fester in this mess that he has made and just keep moving on the right direction alone, away from his abuse and towards my self-confidence and independence. She knows that's what she's supposed to do. And sometimes we do just need someone to validate that intuitive thought. I don't know why her therapist is not doing this for her and she's got to write into the Washington Post, but okay. I kind of wish I had my own column, y'all. So it says, if he were genuinely interested in your well-being, he would offer an apology and amends that require nothing of you. Zero. And that didn't require you to respond in any way because it wasn't, because it was for you entirely and not for him. This man wants to apologize at the very least to make himself feel better, but more likely to keep having access to her and manipulating and talking and staying together. And then she's literally just going to ruin her life and die probably. And I'm not kidding. Because these men make you feel so bad about yourself when you know you're with someone that you deserve b better behavior and more love than they're giving. The thing that it was, was probably the hardest thing for me to realize or one of the most difficult things was realizing that every single day I stayed with this man that I knew I shouldn't be with in every relationship that I was in that I knew I shouldn't be with in intuitively. Every, every day that I stayed chipped away at my self-confidence, my self-respect, any self-love, so that by the time, it just got harder and harder to get out the longer I stay. And yet I'm also like a glutton for punishment and like a total masochist, so on some level I kind of had to hit that level before I was like, fine, I'm done! But I'm telling you, if she goes back and she stays in this relationship, her confidence is going to plummet. And the problem with that is that not only does that mean she's just probably gonna stay longer, but she's not gonna take care of her health as much. Right? Like the first thing that went when I was in a relationship with a, with a manipulative sociopathic liar who was actually more than emotionally abusive was also the other things too, was my health. The man didn't want me going to the gym. He texted me all the time. Every time I went to the gym, blah, blah, blah. so I couldn't even like exercise in peace because he wouldn't shut up. My food was terrible. I was eating junk. I mean, when you don't feel good, you don't take care of yourself. So this woman, besides any kind of like, autoimmune stuff that's going to happen from staying in a relationship she knows she shouldn't be in and could get out of but is like oh but I worry about him or whatever every if not only could she die from autoimmune diseases that are going to you know possibly give her cancer and all things down the road because it's very stressful living with a lying cheating piece of crap right that's supposed to be that brown emoji I think anyway but this man will ruin her finances it'll ruin everything you think you're going to go after that career that you believe in when you're dating trash? No, you stop believing in yourself. I didn't write a word when I was with that dude. The only time in my life I have never been creative when I was with that dude. You know, after living in New York and, and you know, doing improv and writing and working in the film industry, everything I did was creative. Everything. With that dude, nothing. No creativity. This man exhausted me. And I wasn't confident, so I hated myself. It will literally ruin your life if not kill you to stay with these men and for what because i don't I, you know i want to forgive him i need closure i want him to feel better about trying to ruin my life and disrespecting me and cheating and all the other things he did Blah! no so she calls this out right here you know she's like instead he wants something out of it for himself you know your forgiveness your presence your attention your gift get gift of get out of jail free card right this is a transaction for his benefit and y'all you know i talk about this a lot so many men really see everything as a transaction. Oh, I wash the dishes, give me a BJ, right? Or, oh, like whatever. Everything's a transaction to them. And they call us gold diggers. So, and I love this line right here. He just transitioned his manipulation to a new phase. The, I love you, I need you, I was so very wrong, but I'm cured, kind of take me back. Blah, blah, blah. The article goes on to say that, you know, yeah, accept his apology, don't meet up with him, blah, blah, blah. And I kind of agree, do not meet up with that man. Do not meet up with that man. Talk everything through a lawyer. I wouldn't even, honestly, I would just not talk to him. If you don't have kids together and don't have to co-parent, don't talk to him. No contact. Because these men know, they know us. Like, they don't really know us, but they know all of our weaknesses. They know our nervous system better than we do. They know our trauma responses. They literally have been taking in information. They're like little detectives. They probably take notes. Okay, if I say this, this triggers her daddy response. If I say this, it triggers that, right? Like they're, they're brilliant predators. Dumb as rocks, brilliant predators. Ah, some of them are smart too. A lot, a lot of them are just so dumb, but they're survivors. They know, that's why they eat this so well, okay? That's why, I mean, not all of them, but the hobos, 
they eat this real well because they they gotta pay rent, buddy. That's how they pay rent. <laughs> uh, it's good at first and then it's never worth it. Now I want to show you research that was done. In case you were like, well, maybe, you know, he cheated, but he has like a schmegs addiction or he's blah, 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 right? Please pay attention to this, what I'm going to show you from Psychology Today that's like, don't believe, don't believe his men. In case there was any doubt whatsoever, cheaters don't even regret it. Cheaters don't regret it, y'all. So this came out in Psychology Today. So this study was done uh, with, uh, with the focus was on users of Ashley Madison, which I, I didn't even realize this thing existed till recently. But it's apparently a web, a popular website and dating app that helps people who are typically in exclusive relations have discreet affairs. Yep, someone was like, I know. Let's make dishonest people more easily able to uh, screw over people. Anyway, okay. So what? Who's their research on? Eight hundred and ten people were surveyed. Uh, there's a huge skew of, uh, first of all, the average age was 51. So, you know, these men who are married with children, okay, that's probably who we're talking about. Uh, average age 51. Uh, the huge skew of, <laughs> of male and straight. 52% were engaged, married, or in domestic partnership. Other questions they asked was about, you know, uh, your views on schmegs and love, self-esteem, motives uh, for having an affair, and feelings after having an affair. So they're asking all these questions, right? And one of the things that people tend to say when they're talking about their relationships, they tended to report on being in love with their partner. Oh, God. Of course. Uh, but I love her. I love her. I really do. Yeah, right. Ugh. On a scale of five, they're like four, four points of like, I love her. On the other hand... Their schmegual satisfaction was low, 2.5. About half of the users said they were not schmegually active with their significant other. I wonder why that is. I wonder why, because it's mostly men, straight men. I wonder why their wives aren't forking them. It's like, I really wish this study would go deeper. I'm, I'm guessing a man did this study, to be honest. Because a woman would be like, well, let me ask you something. How involved are you at home? How much, how often do you take her out? How often do you say, I love you and actually do anything other than exploit and extract things from her, right? Uh, that question would be very revealing. No, it's just as boiled down to, um, I love her, but I'm not satisfied. She isn't giving it up. So why were they going to a place like this to have an affair? The usual reasons, oh, this is such a man answer. Such a man victim answer. A lack of love in the relationship. I love her, but there's a lack of love. What do you think they mean by love? You know, okay, I've talked about this before, y'all. That dude, that white supremacist dude who came up, the, the Baptist, like, preacher, old white man from the South who came up with the love languages. I'm not saying they're not valid. I actually think there's, like, some validity to it, but that man created that whole thing to try to convince women to give, provide men what they, their love language, which is always physical. It's always physical. Acts of service, probably. We know what kind of service, right? Like, in addition to all the other things that women do for them. But I, you know, again, if I did this research, I would be like, what do you, what is your definition of feeling loved? What does that look like to you? Because I guarantee some of these men are so dead inside and hate themselves so much that they don't appreciate what love actually looks like and feels like if she's not boning them on a regular basis when they want. I don't feel loved. Ah. Look, anger at partner because she won't fork me. Or feeling neglected. Again, that's probably down to like her not giving you a burger. Like, and they're probably all like corn addicts anyway. And they probably don't eat this. Which is probably why she's not forking you to begin with because you probably don't even care about her. Oh, I'm making a lot of assumptions. I know this. I'm jumping to a lot of conclusions. I know this. But based on what I, we see every day, um, a marriage sucks for most women. But these men don't feel loved. They feel neglected. So they're going to go on this site and find them some, mm -mm, right? And then feel no regret. That's the part that's the worst. So their main reasons for cheating was their schmegual dissatisfaction. And, um, <laughs> their other ones were low commitment, autonomy. Look at this. Wanting freedom and independence and a desire for a variety of schmegual parts. 
Okay, that, that man I just talked about, literally when he got caught, every time he got cheating, he said he lied because he needed to feel independent. Look at this. Look at this. I need to be independent. I want to be a single man who gets all the benefits of marriage. Why can't you be okay with that, dummy? Like, these guys are so ridiculous. This is what patriarchy has taught them, okay? This is what they were taught that they are entitled to, okay? They are not just born thinking the world owes them everything. This is social conditioning. This is what patriarchy taught them. The same way, like, white supremacy culture teaches white people, like, everything is for our taking, right? Like, this is all conditioning, okay? But these men, like this, don't want to actually unpack that. And they don't want to deal with their own stuff. And they don't want to ask themselves, why do I hate myself so much that I have this woman who loves me, risked her life giving children, raised those children, does all this stuff, all this stuff. And, like, why, why would I want to blow that up? They're just like, no, I want to, oh, I'm not good, I'm getting good love. And then they just ruin their marriages. And they only feel bad if they get caught. That is some serious self-hate right there. Now, I don't care that they hate themselves at this point. That's not my problem to fix. But I understand why they do it. Entitlement under patriarchy and self-hate. Not my problem. Go fix it yourself, bro. But that's where I believe most of this is coming from. Men who are so insecure and hate themselves will lit literally ruin your life and they'll be on this stupid app. Now, look at this. A lot of the users have been on the app but weren't able to have an affair. Why? Because it's mostly men on the app. But for those who were successful, how do they feel afterwards? And this seemed to just baffle this researcher. I'm guessing this is a man. I gotta look it up. I can't read it. Every screenshot is cut off. So here's the thing that they got out of it. Emotional satisfaction. Now, I've told y'all before that I've actually interviewed um, a lot of Schmegs workers for several of my pieces, including that Harper's Bazaar piece, Men Have No Friends and Women wear Bear the Burden. And the part that was cut out of that article, this article right here, one of my proudest work I've ever done, the part that was cut out of this article for just for word count, really, because it was already a crazy long article, was one of my favorite parts. And it was the research that I did with a lot of Schmegs workers who said so many men go to them. Yes, they want to have schmegs, but a lot of them really don't even want that. They literally just want to talk and, and complain about their wives. And they also said that that was the most exhausting part of their job, was listening to these men. These men were literally paying these women so they could feel heard and understand about what a victim they are. And because these women are getting paid and they're not therapists and they just want to, like, pay their rent. By the way, I very much appreciate schmegs workers, and if you don't, that's okay, but leave it out of my comments. But if these men actually paid a therapist, the therapist might challenge them, you know? Might be like, well, you know, whatever. No, they want to go to someone who will say, yes, oh, well, mm, 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 right? Because they're getting paid to do that. And then also maybe get a BJ at the end of it. Men like this see themselves as a victim, don't want to change, want to keep power, are, are, feel like it's better to just be safe and hate yourself and feel like a victim than to ever actually do the hard work, the brave work of going inward and questioning all this stuff. Instead, they just get on this app and go have an affair. So they get emotional satisfaction, right? Four out of five. Schmedule satisfaction, four out of five. Above, uh, sorry, 4.5. Above. But look at this. On the flip side, regret was rated very low. Less than a two out of five. In other words, those, these users tended to get what they wanted and not feel bad about it afterwards. Not bad at all. Well, this researcher is like, okay, you know, trying to give these people a benefit of the doubt. You know, it could be very well that like, you know, they did feel a lot worse, aren't willing to admit it. No. Or they've suppressed their guilt or shame. Yeah, okay, maybe. But again, this is self-reporting, okay? Like, these guys are just like, yeah, I don't feel bad. <laughs> Like, no shame. Can we bring back shame? I know Brene Brown talked a lot about shame, but uh, I've, we have used that whole thing to like, be like, men have so much shame. Let's let them get away with everything because they feel bad. Come on. No shade to Brene, but I just hate the way that people have used that. It, and here's the other thing. The reason why a lot of these men had no regret because they were habitual cheaters. 64% of the participants reported having an affair before this act these men aren't sorry don't take them back they will literally ruin your life